Hello, this is Nathan Wood, pastor of North Dayton Baptist Church, and welcome to day 336 of the McShane Reading Plan. So glad you could join us. We're in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, Micah 7, Psalm 108, and Psalm 109. Um, no particular order. Psalm 109, let his days be few, verse 8, and let another take his office. This is referring to Judas Iscariot um, at the beginning of the book of Acts. Um, little did they know that God was also going to raise up the Apostle Paul as well. Um, Psalm 108, wilt not thou, verse 11, O God, who cast us off, and wilt thou... Not thou, O Lord, go forth with our hosts. Give us help from trouble in vain. Uh, excuse me, from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for it is, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. David understands the mercy of God is, and the grace of God more fully than most of his day. And even if he doesn't understand it, and I don't think that we fully understand it, even <clears throat> even if we're born again, the magnitude of the grace of God. I mean, we we as humans even struggle with it. Uh, you know, we we understand kindness uh, to a certain extent, kindness to people where it might be beneficial to us, uh, thinking, well, this is the right thing to do. Um, do as you may will have been done by, um, golden rule type stuff. But it's all very well to have a air of doing good to people who do good to you or who are your blood or your friend. Doing good to the neutral passerby. Okay. Doing good to those less fortunate. Okay. The world even comes down to that point. Um, you know, this whole put yourself in the other person's shoes is very possible. What's not understood by the world and not even understood by some theologians that want to cast Israel off, because look, verse 11, God who casts us off, David's writing about Israel. He hadn't been cast off. Now, I'm sure David felt cast off several times, but the judgment of the of the Babylonian and Assyrian captivity hadn't happened yet, nor had the diaspora of the modern age, which started in 70 AD and lasted until 1948 and is still kind of trickling back into the Holy Land. Um, it's still in existence in some ways, even though the land has been reopened for business, as it were, after 2,000 years, and that has never happened before to any other nation. Um, but what is, what, what is he getting at? We as individuals, we don't understand withholding <clears throat> mercy. I mean, we don't understand withholding judgment, what somebody deserves when we have contempt for them, when we've cast them off, when they're dead to us. Of course we won't withhold, withhold judgment. Of course we'll throw the book at them. Um, look no further than high button, hot button, high profile trials. I don't, whatever side of um, the issue you were on, uh, whether it's back in the 90s, uh, O.J. Simpson, uh, recently, Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, the cops that um, either killed or were complicit in killing George Floyd, um, the list goes on. Uh, where people on both sides of the issue want to throw the book at somebody. Either they want the book thrown at the person being accused or they want the book f thrown at the person doing the accusing. Well, they ought to be strung up. Well, they ought to be, you know, they ought to be locked up. Blah, 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 blah. And there's a lot of backlash and blowing steam and, and people denouncing uh, their fellow uh, citizens and all this sort of thing. No, when it comes to being wronged or our group being wronged or our identifying ideologies being wronged, 
Heck, even Christians, professing Christians, we, we want to throw the book at somebody who mistreats Christians. Osama bin Laden, you wanted to see him shot in the dark and, and thrown in the ocean or whatever. You know, it's like, it's important. It's important that we realize that we as humans don't have a natural bend towards grace, okay? Or mercy, there's two different things. I was talking about mercy. We wanna see people get what they deserve and we, want, we don't wanna give them better than they deserve. Most of us, most of us even don't want uh, anything given to us that we haven't earned. We may feel that we have earned more than what somebody else thinks we've earned. We may think that we're worth more than what somebody else, and that's a big economic talk. And then some people have no problem getting something that they haven't earned. And they're unashamed about it. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Salvation by its very nature is unearned. It's mercy, meaning that when you are born again, you don't get the punishment you deserve, which is eternal torment. Torment, okay? When you think of torment, you think of somebody putting a, jumping in a bonfire and doing, uh, doing, doing a roll on top of the fire, unquenching for eternity. Um, you think about somebody taking a, um, a uh, I don't know, taking a ball bat and hitting you in the face for eternity. That's, that's hell, okay? Um, and you don't die. So God's mercy is when you're born again, you don't experience that. And His grace is that you are elevated to sonship, to daughterhood, to enjoying eternal bliss in the kingdom of the Lord. So, cast off. Not even many theologians of the European descent understand that David is not talking about casting off of Israel, the judgment of Israel is being permanent, okay? We as humans can have trust in the mercy of the Lord that He has not utterly cast us off and that He is true and faithful because even when He judges Israel, He doesn't cast them off eternally. Now those who reject Him individually, yes. But as a whole, the people, He doesn't reject them any more than he rejects humanity. He deals with us on an individual basis. He hasn't given up on us, okay? So his promises to Israel holding true are a picture and a pattern and an indication of his making good on the promises that he gives to us as a whole. And we go over and over and over again this, but I'm, I'm wanting you to see this in these instances of scripture, to read it. Will not thou, God, who has cast us off, and wilt thou not, O God, go forth with our host? So in other words, Lord, we're in bad with you. How many times have you been in a situation where you feel like you haven't done right by the Lord? Even if you haven't done something sinful, per se. And, but to him who knoweth to, go, to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Hmm. You're not quite where you ought to be. So does that mean you have no right to ask the Lord to be with you and go forth with your host to go forth with you? Oh Lord, I didn't read my Bible. I can't ask you to help me in the test. Oh Lord, I didn't pray like I should have this week. I can't ask for your help in this business deal. I need your wisdom, but I can't ask for No, folks, he's with us. If you're his child, you can ask him for whatever. And he is faithful and just and merciful and gracious better than any of us. So yes, yes, God is not some kid with a magnifying glass. He is there wanting to help you. That doesn't mean that you'll get everything that you ask for. But folks, He wants to help you and He wants to be in your life actively. And He wants you to be actively pursuing Him. Will not God, excuse me, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. We try to get around things. 
by man's physical means. You know, folks, I'm not saying that, uh, that we don't need to be good stewards of what God has given, but sometimes, sometimes the right thing to do is not um, pragmatic or doesn't make sense. Sometimes God wants us to do things in His kingdom that we would not ordinarily be inclined to do. Um, speaking to someone when we are bashful, um, teaching someone when we don't feel that we have uh, proper aptitude ourselves to teach. Folks, He uses fishermen to shake the halls of governments. So, though God, through God we shall do valiantly, valiantly, for he, is, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Who made man, man's mouth, Moses? <laughs> I was stuttering myself. Who made man's mouth, Moses? It's not for your glory. It's not your ability. It belongs to God. And if you have ability that you're not using for the Lord, He can take it away. And if you have no ability in yourself that you can even think of, He can bless you beyond any thought that you have. Back to the matter. Micah 7, um, verse 3 is drawing attention to the evil of the world, doing evil with both hands earnestly. The prince Athos and the jug, judge asketh for the reward, and the great man he uttereth mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. Yeah, the world is corrupt. It's nothing new. You think there's corruption in Washington? Nothing new. There's been corruption in Washington before. Look to previous administrations that have gone in years past, even before you were born. There's corruption. Look at the throne of England. Look at the empire of Rome. Look, yeah, even in the houses of government of Israel itself in antiquity and even now. Don't you think there's corruption? Everywhere there's human association, there's going to be corruption. Scratching backs and buddies, getting each other out of trouble and, and a double standard for those that are the common people. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, there's people that go to jail for things that a VIP won't go to jail for. That happens. That happens. But the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. You stick with the Lord. He's the one that can bust people <laughs> out of jail for preaching the gospel. But make sure that you're standing for the gospel and not your own selfish lusts. That's, that's the key. Who is like... Who is a God like unto thee, verse 18, that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Yeah, it's only a small pe group of people, the remnant, even of Israel. Sadly, it's going to be the minority of people in this existence, in this life. The minority are going to enjoy salvation. Not that the rest of them could not. Why is it the minority? It's because the, mi the majority of people are proud. Even if they're good, what we would call, what we would call soul to the earth type people, the majority of people are proud. No, I just can't let that get by. You need to read uh, The Abolition of Man sometime, or yeah, I believe, yeah, The Abolition of Man sometime. I believe that's right. No, 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 excuse me. Well, read The Abolition of Man. Um, excuse me, I'm getting it mixed up with The, the Great Divorce. Um, it's fiction writing in a heavenly setting, um, but it's talking about how people, even if they were given the option, hypothetically, of leaving hell and coming to heaven, they would not be willing to let go of their pride enough to do it. Pride is so deadly. So deadly. The humble heart is what Christ meant, put forth. He delights in mercy. He does not retain his anger forever. We talked about this. The world thinks you ought to get what you deserve. And you ought not get any better. Ladies and gentlemen, the worst of us think that somebody else needs to get what's coming to them. And then when it comes time for them to get accused, they want out. They want mercy. They want, it's like, that's the way of the world. That's the way of the world. Fight back, fight back, spite, malice, and hatred. Good to good people, and as soon as somebody does something that we disagree with, our, 
we wash our hands of them. Not so with Jesus. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He delights in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He's not going to reject Israel forever. Just like he's not going to reject the world forever. He's just waiting for all who will come to him willingly to come before he turns to judgment and cleansing. Thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. That's a precious promise. Are your sins cast into the depths of the sea? Thou wilt perform the truth that to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn to the fathers from the days of old. That's not metaphor. That's literal. Are you a child of Abraham according to the faith in the promise? Are you a true child of Abraham, even if you are a physical son of, or daughter of Abraham? Have you trusted in your Messiah? Important questions. Important questions. First John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, the physical word. John begins his first epistle with the word, just like he did his gospel. The word of life, he handled the word, made flesh, hallelujah. And if we don't follow him, if we don't have the fruit of the Spirit dwelling within us and manifesting, we really need to take stock. If we're not following Him in our words and deeds, in our heart and mind, in our conversation, I'm not saying you won't slip up, but guess what? If, if we say that we have fellowship and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Faith without works is dead. That's what James says. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if you're a if you're a Bible-believing Christian and you think that uh, you've earned your way to sinlessness or you're above all that, and, and uh, yeah, if you think that uh, you're goody-two-shoes and you have no sin and shame, shame on everybody else, dirty, dirty them, you are in the wrong. You are in the wrong. If we confess our sins, good news, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's one of the most precious verses, verses in all of Scripture. But if we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. Well, I'm not bad. I've never killed nobody, but Him over there. Oh, folks, how many people have gone to hell by being a good, hard-working American? Did right by their neighbor. How many people have gone to hell? Because guess what? You don't get there by your works. If you reject the Son, I don't care how good, how good or salt of the earth you think somebody was. I. It's only by Christ that we get to heaven. And that's the message for you. I'm not here to preach somebody to hell. I don't know their situation. But it is dire, dire, that we understand that we are not going to get there by our righteousness. It's not talking, he's not criticizing bad people here. He's criticizing good people who think that they have been righteous. You notice that? Just like the Pharisees. There's a lot of people who are hard rockers and partiers. I like rock music and I like to attend parties, depending on what it is. <laughs> Gatherings. Okay, so getting together and having fun, enjoying uh, life, he, that, Jesus did that. Jesus himself did that, okay? And enjoying music. That's not wrong. David did that. Guess what? Guess what? If, if we think, if we think that we are going to abstain from that sort of thing and elevate ourselves to the point of righteousness, we're out of our minds. And people who, there's a lot of people who are, uh, who behave badly. I think I have a dog getting into our trash can. Norm, get over here. Norm. Oh, no, I guess not. Anyway. <laughs> You 
moving in your sleep. Anyway, hey buddy, what's going on? Hi. Um, the um, there's a lot of people who uh, behave very poorly who have no delusions of um, of what they deserve. In fact, some of those people are the ones who repent the quickest. Jesus came to them. That's what happens in the gospel. Those are your Simon Peters oftentimes. We need to realize that when we get too big for our britches, um, there might be a lot more people that you think didn't make it into heaven that will be there than people that attended and tithed. Don't let you yourself be one of them. If you attend and you tithe, that's great. If you remember, that's great. Make sure your faith is in Jesus and not in your own deeds. Um, and then first, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 8. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. What are you doing? I need to potty. You need to potty? Unless I'm on the couch, I'm waiting until you're done. Okay? Well, hold on. We're almost done. Can you say hi? Hi. Okay. <laughs> now, Lord God, let thy promise to David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over people like thus the earth. And then verse 10, give me now wisdom and knowledge. We need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is not a new concept. Um, Jesus has. But look here. We need to pray according to the promise. Je Jesus is the son of David, and the promise of the throne of David is established in him. Okay? The Jewish people's promise is, is sure, and their promise being sure is an indication of the sure promise to the believer, Gentile or Jew, okay? We have faith because God has proven himself. <coughs> I hope that wasn't open. Nope. Okay, anyway. So we need to pray according to the promise. David prayed according to the promise. Solomon prayed according to the promise. Jesus himself prays according to the promise. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can have faith in praying God's will and not say, Oh, I hope he doesn't zap me. I hope it's not his will to get me. Folks, his promise is sure. He has nothing but good for us, even if we die. Tradition says that Paul ran to the chop block to get his head cut off. To live as Christ and die as gain. Don't live in fear. You can have grave concern and loving compassion, but don't live in fear. We have a promise that is sure. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Can you say bye? Bye. Love you. Have a good day. <laughs>